Okay, so thank you for joining us. I'm just going to give um, everyone about 20 seconds to make sure that they're in and joined, and then we will make a start. Okay, so uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Now Teach Career Change webinar. Um, I am Talia and I am the Career Change Lead here at Now Teach. And behind the scenes, we've got Phoebe and she's doing our tech and keeping everything running really smoothly. And I also have Joe and Wendy who are Career Change Specialists behind the scenes as well. And they're ready to answer your questions as they come up in the Q&A box. Um, so we're all part of the team here at Now Teach. And I'm really pleased to be here talking to all of you. And uh, we'll all hear from our guest speaker, Justine, who will introduce herself properly in a few minutes. Um, and also on the panel with me, I've got Joseph, who's also from the team here at Now Teach, and he is uh, part of the team that runs our programme. He will be here at the end to take questions on what it's like to be on Now Teach and how we're working hard to support career changes uh, and what's a really big shift in your working lives. Um, so, um, to ask questions, um, so here at Now Teach, we're here to support you through the whole process, um, and that doesn't matter where you are in the process. Uh, we've got lots of expertise on hand both today and also in the coming weeks and months, and that will just really make sure your transition in your career is as smooth and as informed as possible. Um, and to make sure that we can answer all your burning questions, uh, please type them into the Zoom Q&A tab. And to avoid con uh, confusion, uh, this box is labelled Q&A. It's not the box labelled chat. And our team are on hand to answer your queries. Um, we'll answer some of these in the Q&A box. And then uh, a bit later on, we'll put some of those to myself, Justine, and also Joseph. Um, so we'd love to know a little bit more about you and what you want to hear about. So um, please, could you complete the polls that are going to pop up on your screen um, around about now? I'll just keep those up for a few seconds um, whilst I just explain. So today's event is all about how now teach can support you through uh, your career change. Um, and now teacher wants to see a world where children benefit because uh, talented people who've already had successful careers become teachers and their skills and experience to the schools uh, go to the schools that need them most. And um, so to do that, we attract and recruit experienced people to career change into state schools. Um, we support now teachers and training providers and schools and the whole uh, wider education system to realise the full potential of career changes in education. Um, we won't be able to cover every aspect of this today, but we do have an hour and in that hour we're going to tackle just the key bits and pieces um, and then we'll delve a bit deeper into the process. Um, so there's no better way to learn about what it is to be an our teacher than to hear directly from the cohort themselves. Oh, we don't seem to have sound coming from that. Um, so we'll just see if we can get that working, just a second. Sorry, Talia, do you have no sound? We have no sound. I don't have any sound, I can't hear it. So I think maybe we're not, we don't have any. What we'll do is um, we'll maybe move on to the next uh, part and then at the end, we can play this to uh, round it off. Um, so um, there's another video now, which I'm not sure will work if the sound isn't quite working at the moment. So apologies if we're having a few tech issues. Should we just try it quickly, see if it is working? Hello, I'm Lucy Kellaway. I'm the co-founder of Now Teach. Um, I'm delighted to welcome you today. Really. Okay, so I have lost the sound on that one as well. I'm not sure if that is the kind of happening for everybody, um, but it seems to be happening for me, which so I assume that that's a kind of a Zoom issue that we're having at the moment. So I do apologize about that. It does seem like we're having a few tech issues. So hopefully we can come back and um, play those videos at the end. Uh, we've got one video, which is um, from some of our now teachers and they've recorded some 
uh, messages for you about what it's like to career change and then that was Lucy um, and she is one of our co-founders um, and she was a career changer herself and she really understands the unique benefits and challenges of being a career changer uh, and she talks a little bit about um, setting up and now teach so hopefully we can come back to those at the end um, but luckily most importantly we want to hear from Justine um, so I'm going to hand over to her now so Justine you're you're up a little bit sooner uh, than um, you expected I think but um, such is the world of doing everything online at the moment um, so I'm going to hand it over to you um, she's still right in the thick of teaching and she has some brilliant insights into what it's like to be part of NLT so uh, Justine welcome and um, thanks for being here and I will let you take it from here now Okay. Well, one of the things of being a teacher is dealing with the unexpected. So being a couple of minutes early isn't really um, the most unexpected thing that's happened to me today. Um, so to start with, I'm just going to introduce my career history so you can see some of my background and then just move on to making that change uh, and what it meant and the support that I've had from the network and a couple of insights into um, training to be a teacher. It's impossible to cover everything but hopefully that will give you some of the flavor. Um, so I was a lawyer um, and I decided to do that very early on, very tunnel visioned, A-levels, all chosen with a view to becoming a lawyer, law degree, straight into a city law firm. And the only adaptation I'd really made to that was to go part-time when I had a family and I tried to adjust uh, to that. Um, so I think that my hankering to be a teacher started decades ago. I did want to do it. Um, but to me at that point, um, I think it was probably escapism from my life as a lawyer and a sort of a, a pipe dream that might not be a reality. And I didn't know whether it was true and I could do that. Um, and I must have talked about it a lot at work because one of my colleagues was coming along to one of these sorts of webinars pre-lockdown when we did everything in person. So I just went along out of interest. Chatham House Rules, there were three of us from my firm there at the time. None of us let on to anyone else who were there. Um, and I, I heard about Now Teach then, and it really fired up my enthusiasm, but it, it wasn't the right thing for me at that time. My kids were sort of young. I was trying to juggle a part-time role, and, but I still kept receiving the information. And then um, in September, 2020, my job ended unexpectedly, and I called Now Teach uh, straight away. It's the first thing I did. I uh, didn't call legal headhunters. I just called, I think it was Joe actually, who's um, on this panel um, now, who I spoke to. And um, it was pretty good timing because obviously in the teaching world, we work on academic, um, the academic year. So this was September, October, as the applications were opening. It was a world of uh, words terminology that I had absolutely no understanding what anything meant. I could not work out the roots. Um, you know, I chose my career, you went to university, you qualified. There seemed to be so many different ways of getting into teaching um, that it was pretty impenetrable. But I had a chance, I talked that through, there was the guidance, there were webinars, there was support given all the way, and I just joined whatever I could do. I also had the opportunity and I was lucky, this was October 2020, I did go into a school for a morning and I saw a teaching, I spoke to teachers, I spoke to trainee teachers at the time and so I had an understanding of what was involved and I could see what a current cast classroom looks like. It, it isn't the same as decades ago when I was at school but the how behaviours managed and I could voice my concerns about could I really do this? And I think at that time there were two things that were probably my main concerns. How do you control behavior in a classroom? So the idea of doing a presentation to 100 people in a working environment, that, that was fine. I got used to that. But the idea of 30 teenagers looking at me, not necessarily listening to me or doing what I, how, how do you control that? How do you do that? So that was one concern, but there are ways I can assure you. And the other was how much maths could I really remember? You know, what have I done with maths? Corporate transactions? Yeah, I've done a bit of working out the consideration, how much was being paid for things. Um, but I'd also seen that it's taught slightly differently now. Um, some areas have been expanded. That was through my own kids. Could I really do this 30 years on, over 30 years? 
um, and again, um, discuss that. And that also wasn't a concern. If you could do it then, you can do it now. Um, so that was one of the, uh, the two main considerations that I, I had. Um, I had decided there are various routes through, and if I use, again, terminology you haven't um, heard before, I apologize. It's called the skipped route. So I decided I would do my training through school. So rather than going a more university-based route to do a PGC, I wanted to be in one school for the, my training, um, be part of that school and really learn on the job. Um, and it, it was something I was familiar with. I had done that uh, as in my training as a lawyer through a training contract. So uh, I thought that would suit me best. Um, I decided I would apply through ARC. Um, one of my mo main motivators for going into teaching was I, I wanted to teach maths. I like maths, I love maths. And I wanted to teach to children where it would make a difference. And I wanted to go into a state school that was in a deprived area. Um, and I had been mentoring in East London um, through a work scheme before. And there were children that weren't taught by maths teachers. They were being taught by anyone that, you know, an English teacher could be teaching the maths. So um, that also gave me comfort because I'd still probably know more maths even now. Um, so that was the route I went through. I applied, actually at this time, I had my first interviews about now. Um, second interviews were then into January, February. And so by mid-February, end of February, so that half term, I had my, my place. And the thing that I was determined I wanted to do was a subject knowledge enhancement course. So there are specialist courses that are set up that are designed to just get your sort of subject knowledge up to scratch with a focus on teaching, because it is very different being um, a teacher of a subject than it is, you could be, you have a PhD, you could be an absolutely superb in that subject, but you've got to teach teenagers. And so um, one of the things that I wanted was a condition in my offer that I would do this course because that meant it was funded. Um, I had managed to answer a maths question correctly in my interview, which meant they thought my maths was great. Um, but I still, you know, I wanted that extra reassurance. Um, and so it was agreed I would do an eight week course. So I managed to do that between April and June. Um, went into the school I was going to in the July and um, I then had a two week training in the summer with ARC um, to get me uh, ready for going into school in September. So it was a long lead up time, but it was all very structured. Um, and the other thing to just remember is um, in school holidays, schools shut down. That's a big pro of being a teacher, actually. There are no work emails when you're on your school holiday. Um, it, it all shuts down around you, your whole world stops. Um, the, the other thing that I did realize about being a teacher was that my days would be much stru more structured. So they, you do have to be in, you do have a full day, but crises happen during the day. They don't happen in the evenings like they used to when I was a lawyer. So that was great. I think I was lucky because I had a lot of support all around. So my family were very supportive. Um, my husband decided I'd um, been doing an area of uh, law I didn't want to do for a while. And it was my turn to have a go at doing something I wanted to do. And my children were as well. Um, there has been adaptation because of the hours. Um, I don't have the flexibility to just take a day off to go and do something um, when I want to. I am structured around my school holidays um, and obviously the pay is less than I was earning as a lawyer. Um, but the upside is I, I have that structure. Every day is structured. I have my holidays and I have a sort of certainty about when I'm going into work. If I need to prepare, I can always prepare in advance. But I think the biggest support I've had is um, from within those that know the teaching profession. So I think without having been to that original Now Teach webinar, I wouldn't have thought teaching was possible. I've had um, support in how to navigate the various routes. So um, what do I do? Where do I apply? How do I apply? So I was able to discuss what interviews might look like. I um, 
was told they involve preparing a lesson plan. It sounds pretty onerous the first time you hear it. Well, I, I haven't learned to teach yet, so what do I do? But I attended a Now Teach webinar on how you would do that um, and was given help. And so that was, um, that was great. And then um, through my teaching, there's been a lot of support. We, the teaching profession has expectations on training. You have a coach, you have a mentor, it's all very supportive. You have, once you qualify, you're an early career teacher. That's what I am now. And again, I have coaching, I have support. That's all from within my school and there was my training provider. But I also have the extra support that I've got through Now Teach. So I'm part of the cohort. We all started together in September 2021. I'm also part of the maths cohort within and the subject within Now Teach. I'm involved in some of those. I'm also part of the wider uh, cohort. So we have a comp we had a conference in the summer. Our webinars are delivered by experts in the field. I'm not sure many people have heard uh, Doug Lamoff and when you start your teacher training, you'll hear about Doug Lamoff actually running a session remotely. Um, I, I'm lucky I've had that. And there are socials, so there's um, a support there. So I think that, that there is support around you. There is also a willingness for you to succeed. Um, I think that the important thing was finding the right school and the right training provider for me. And that's going to be different for everybody. Um, so I would research that quite carefully, think about that um, and just think about what support you're going to have. Um, things that are very different about it. Um, most of my colleagues are young enough to be my children, but it doesn't matter. You just get stuck in. You just go. No one questions that. They're just pleased to see you, you participate, you join in. Um, but I've had to learn that uh, the main thing I've had to learn is I've had to overcome a slight self-consciousness. Teaching is uh, practice is reflective. So when you're discussing things and you're thinking it, you think about, well, that went well. How could I improve? And then you practice and you practice it uh, with your coach. You practice it um, in advance. You practice all these techniques and these routines. So they are they're embedded in your memory when you're in the classroom and that's part of dealing with behavior and so the two-week summer school I had before I started I mean it sounds really silly but it is um, we mark green pen we correct work with green pens it's green pens ready in three two everyone green pens and one and I realized that my children had been listening when we got to the dinner table and we were about to start eating and I got a end cutlery up in three and two and one. So something that I've been mortified about before, I just, um, I've just learned to deal with now. So it, it is great. Um, you can see yourself making a difference really, really quickly. Yes, it's bewildering. Yes, there are lots of things to learn at first and you just pick them up, but you can see the small wins just almost from the first week. So I had uh, one of my pupils, she was a year nine pupil. Uh, I cold called her, that's what we're told to do, just pick on a child, you know, come on, answer. And the next thing I knew, she'd left the room in tears, floods of tears, no response at all. And I'm sort of standing there thinking, oops, this isn't going very well. And my, um, my mentor who was observing that lesson actually went after her. I didn't know and I should have known I should have looked into it she was slightly fragile from a mental perspective this was just after Covid but within about three weeks I had her comfortable she actually would answer some questions and by the end of the term she was volunteering answers and I think that when you change career we're as an older person coming into it you have a confidence you have dealt with people you've dealt with different scenarios and I do think that is something that really really does help you so I think to conclude, I have absolutely no qualms about having made this decision. I found it energizing. It's given me a new focus and I actually enjoy um, being in work and going into school, but I do also enjoy the summer holidays as well. So that was what I was gonna say. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you, you earn those summer holidays after 
after the, the school year for sure. Um, thanks so much Justine for sharing your story. Um, it's really useful to hear from you and just get a kind of first-hand experience of someone like yourself who's um, you know benefit from now teach support and you're also just able to thrive in the classroom as a teacher and um, so we obviously didn't hear those videos earlier so I think what we're going to do is we're going to send them around um, after this um, to you everyone who um, is attending and um, we think that's better than just um, trying it again and it not working and it not being trying to be as slick as possible but you know there's, <laughs> there's always touch and go with technology so um, I think that's what we'll do. Um, but um, there is a bit of context around this video, so I think um, what this kind of you've kind of missed um, because um, obviously you didn't get to to watch them. So I think it's just to make it really clear about um, who now teach are, like what we do. So uh, we're not a training provider. Um, we are a support program, um, purely supportive. We're um, here to work with you as career changers, um, and we have. Um, uh, my team who are the career change team um, and we support you in kind of the early stages and then there's a program team um, which is Joseph's team who you're going to hear from in a little while um, who supports you through the program and um, you'll get a bit more kind of colour and flavour from that when you watch the uh, videos that we send around um, it'll either be this evening or tomorrow that we'll, we will do that. Um, okay, so now you've heard from Justine, I'm just going to uh, speak to some of the more logistical things um, and also just the type of things that now teach can support you with. So shortly we're going to delve into uh, what is the Q&A part of the session, uh, meaning we'll get to answer the questions from you. Um, but first, there are some questions which always come up, um, so I just want to preempt those and ensure that you're getting all the crucial information up top. Um, so Justine, you can take a breather and then you and Joseph will speak to some of those questions that are coming through. Um, so everyone on this call today will be at a slightly different point in their thinking. Um, we understand that you need a really bespoke approach to, to the support, but there are some questions that everybody seems to have in common. Um, so um, I think we're going to have some of those questions on screen now. Um, so firstly, how do I become a teacher with Now Teach? Um, so first of all, uh, just a quick overview of how we can support you into teaching and now teach so to reiterate we don't run a teach training program we support career changes as you transition to teaching and you remain part of the now of now teach throughout your entire career as a teacher and um, so we have an offer um so um which is kind of uh, where we support you in three ways. So firstly, our career change specialists will support you with your initial teacher training application. So whether that's advising on the DFE apply service or helping you to secure interviews uh, through our partners um, or coaching on the interview pro process itself. Um, Joe, Rachel, Phoebe, uh, Wendy and the team are really well equipped to, to support people who are changing career at the mid to later stage. Um, and secondly, uh, once you've secured a training place, our programme team support you during the first two years. Uh, that's your teacher training and your first year as qualified teacher. Um, so Joseph, who's with us today, is part of that team and I know he'll be more than happy to speak to you what that looks like. Uh, a bit later on. So, and thirdly, you also become part of the Now Teach network of hundreds of career changers. Um, they're there to share learning and experiences with you as you train and then just ongoing for the rest of your career as a teacher. Uh, and I know Joseph will agree that Now Teachers say this is one of the best aspects of what we do. Um, it's the community of people who are doing or have done just what you are doing. Um, and that can be really valuable and useful. Okay, so next question is about what the process looks like. So there's two parts, um, an elig eligibility check in our expression of interest form, and then you complete the full registration by submitting a statement about your motivation to teach and your career. If it looks like we're the right fit to support you, uh, we'll invite you to a consultation, and that's to talk more about your motivation to teach and go through some key competencies there will be a consultation outcome. And if you're proceeding to the next steps, you are then invited to join Now Teach. Um, and then we then support you in securing a training place with a training provider. And then you'll be on to the start of your training itself. 
Um, so we also always get asked, what are the different training routes? And it is a little bit more complicated uh, possibly than uh, people are expecting. So at a very basic level, there are two main types of training program. So we have university or school-based. So with university-based, you will begin in a university setting with lectures and seminars, and then you'll complete two block placements at schools. And with a school base, you would be in school and you'll learn on the job from day one. You may step out of school for one day a week uh, to a different learning environment, but you are based in one school and that's for the majority of the year. And you'll probably do some time in another school for contrast. Um, there are also kind of two qualifications associated with teacher training. So QTS, um, this is qualified teacher status, this is the qualification you require to teach in a school in England, and th that's the key key thing. Um, and then there's the PGCE, uh, which most people have heard of um, and associate with teaching, and that's an academic qualification. You get this from a university-based route mostly. Um, you can also do it on a school-based route, um, but it's not compulsory. So the key things are that you can achieve QTS and become a teacher without a PGCE. Um, so our career training specialists will be more than happy to speak to you in more details about this um, and what your options are, and also just how these options match up with your specific circumstances. So next question um, we'll, we usually get as well is, am I eligible? Um, so our expression of interest form checks your eligibility, um, but just to highlight that our legal criteria for teacher training um, that you have to meet, and that's uh, maths and English GCSE at C or above, with an option to take an exam if you don't have these, um, undergraduate honours degree, uh, further criteria for subject eligibility is variable and that does depend on the training provider, um, but either an A-level degree or relevant experience in your chosen subject is required. And if you have overseas qualifications, um, you can apply to a government body called ENIC for a statement of comparability uh, and they will check for you how your overseas qualifications match up. Um, so at this point, I will also add a quick note on subjects, which I know has come up um, in the Q&A box as well. Um, so what subjects can I teach? Um, so we support trainees across subjects. Uh, there tends to be more, um, especially where there tends to be more initial tr teacher training positions available. Um, our team can discuss which subject is the right choice for you based on um, your experience, your interests, and also your qualifications. There are shortages of teachers in particular subjects, things like maths, physics, chemistry, um, modern foreign languages, and computer science, and there are more training options for these subjects, and they also do attract a higher government bursary. Um, so that will lead us on here to what financial support is available. Um, change in career does mean a change of income for many. Um, there are some government tax-free bursaries. Um, these vary, and the higher bursaries are, of course, for shorter subjects, and they're up to £27,000, um, and they're for subjects like maths, physics, uh, chemistry, and computing. Um, they do bring in the highest bursaries. Um, so again, when you're thinking about your skills and your qualifications and where your, all your experience lies, it is worth discussing this with a career training specialist and it, so you can have a look at um, what the best fit for you all around would be. Um, and that's taking finances into consideration. So all trainees pay tuition fees for their training year, and that's whether you're on a university or a school route. Um, and there are student loans available to help you with this. Um, around £9,250, I think, the equivalent of a year's university fees uh, plus maintenance loans are available um, and life year living costs, and they depend on your household income. Um, once you gain QTS, you enter the teacher salary scale, and um, so that's after your kind of first training year. As a new qualified teacher, you begin on a salary of at least £25,000 outside of London, or if you're inside of London, that is £32,000. So uh, now we're going to move on to um, some of your questions that are coming through. So I'm going to bring uh, Justine and Joseph in um, and we can make a quick start on that. So I'm having a quick look now at what's been coming in from you. Um, so uh, I've got one question here and I think Joseph might be really interesting for you to kind of jump in on this one. Um, it's about routes. Um, and the different routes that you can take. And I just wonder from your experience of talking to 
career changes that are on the programme. Do you feel that um, the question is, uh, good evening, what are the advantages and disadvantages of training at a school and training at a university? I'm sure there's pros and cons kind of to both, but I'm just wondering um, what it is that now teachers say about it and how they found it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very happy to give a bit of an overview and um, I'm sure that Justine might want to jump in also and talk about her own yeah. experience. Um, we support people obviously on on all sorts of routes. Um, a few things to bear in mind, if you are doing a university based route, you won't be in school from day one. Um, generally speaking, you sort of start going into school a little bit later on in September, you have your initial training at the university and you'll do a placement model, um, which basically means that overall over the course of that year, you do spend less time in school than you would if you were doing a school based route. Um, that suits some people really well. If you're someone who would like to kind of get a good grounding in the theory before you go into a school and you're more comfortable learning that way, um, then it could work for you. Uh, the main benefits of doing the school-based route is that you are kind of um, exposed to not just the teaching, but school as a working environment uh, right from day one, which I think that that can be massively beneficial kind of further down the line um, because I think that the experience of our trainees, generally speaking, is that a school is a massively different workplace to what they've experienced in the past. Schools have their kind of idiosyncrasies and they work in, yeah, in different ways. Um, so actually just having that exposure to being in the school from earlier on uh, can really help. It's also worth noting that um, you know, you can be school based and still do the PGCE. There are plenty of options to do that. Being school based doesn't mean that you don't get to engage with the kind of academic study. Um, so that's also worth considering. So a lot of training providers will have you kind of predominantly school based, but they'll work closely with a higher education institution to deliver a PGCE course. What you might find, though, is that if you're interested in doing a PGC, but you're doing it through a school based route, you spend less time in university, you have less access to the kind of lectures and teaching that you might have if you were kind of based solely in the university. But again, that can work really well for some people. Um, so there are a few things to consider there. Lovely, thank you. Uh, Justine, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, I, I think, your that, route? well, one of the things for me was knowing where I was going to be on placement. And mm. so by going through the school route, I was accepted on the art teacher training programme. And then they were looking at where I was going to go and I'd be into school. I did spend three weeks in another school and I actually think it's quite important to see another teaching environment mm. within that your training year because um, it gives you an insight as to what type of school you want to be at when you qualify and um, nine months teaching training is not that long really um, and uh, by going through the school route I've actually stayed at the school that I uh, trained at um, and I, I'm a creature of habit, so that worked well <laughs> for me. But I, I, did do P, I did do PGC as well. I did that through two assignments done, um, as well as doing the school route. Yeah, so yeah, that suited you to be able to stay stay where you were, absolutely. Um, so we've got a really interesting question here, and I'm going to latch a little bit onto it as well. Um, and it's about subject knowledge. Um, so uh, just, you know, it'd be really interesting to hear if this is something you came up against or had to think about. And it's if you need to update your subject knowledge, um, how do you do it? How do you go about it? I wonder if that's something um, you thought about and um, what you did. And then... Um, also, Joseph, I think what I'll latch on to that as well is, you know, how now teach will help uh, career changes prepare during the summer and kind of uh, in those very kind of like early, early weeks as well. Um, but Justine, it'd be nice to start with you on that one. Um, that was something that worried me because I, I had a maths, pure maths A level, but I hadn't done any maths per se since then, other than children's homework sometimes. Um, I don't think it's a concern. I think that if you have managed to do that subject well, and you have to have done that up to A level, you're starting off usually by teaching at the uh, sort of 11 to 14 year olds, and then some of the up to GCSE, um, you find it comes back to you actually more quickly than you think. And I think the other thing is that by going back to the subject and by looking at it again, 
um, you are almost coming at it afresh. And that's quite helpful when you come to teach it. You've only got to be slightly ahead of the kids um, <laughs> and you're still the expert in the room. So I, I would say that I, um, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And if you are in a school that gives coaching, you have discussions on how do I teach this? What do I do? Uh, the resources are available to help you. Um, if you can do a subject knowledge enhancement course, they are usually run remotely. Um, so they are designed to be able to fit in around if you're still working in your current career. Um, and they can be eight weeks, they can be longer. I did decide to do it because I wanted to feel comfortable myself knowing I had done preparation. If I look back in hindsight, it wasn't strictly necessary. I think I would have been fine. The other thing that I got was the CGP, the um, higher the foundation, just the revision books for GCSE, because they were set out quite clearly. And I worked before my interviews, I just worked my way through some of those and it, it didn't take that much. So I think it's something everybody worries about, but I think it's something everybody definitely um, manages successfully. Brilliant, thank you. Joseph, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I think also just in terms of the support that we offer with the Now Teach programme, yeah. I mean, there's there's a few bits and pieces in there and specific details, which I won't go into too much, but um, it's absolutely something that we support with as a programmes team. So throughout the year, we run subject hub events where you can kind of connect with other teachers who are teaching your subject, share ideas, share best practice, that kind of thing. Before you start training, what we'll also do is we'll put you into... Um, we'll put you in touch with lots of other teachers who are teaching already teaching the subject that you are going to be teaching and again um there's a lot of resource sharing that happens there as well um we've supported over 600 career changes into teaching at this stage over the last we're into our fifth year now so um we've got quite a depth of experience in the network in terms of connecting you with people who might be able to share um, yeah, either resources or just share experience of what they did in order to best prepare to go into the classroom as well. Um, and we're very happy to do that. Excellent, thank you. We've had a couple of questions that I think I can answer as well. So I'll just do, I'll do that now. So we've had one um, that says, I'm 58, is that too, uh, is that considered too old to start uh, this challenging career? I'd say absolutely not. We have supported uh, career changes older than 58 um, and we welcome all ages and we think that uh, we just really want that diversity um, in the classroom and also on our cohort as well. Um, so definitely not and um, definitely still um, worth applying for something you want to do. Um, we definitely encourage you. Um, we've also had, a, uh, I had a question. I don't know if you can find it. Oh, there it is. Uh, can you can you choose to teach a subject other than your undergraduate degree? And um, so I think I might have touched on this earlier, but I'll just um, reiterate. So um, you've got all the information and you're really clear. Um, you do not have to only teach the subject that you did your undergrad in. Um, as I said before, like usually if you've got an A level or you have significant experience in a subject, um, then um, that should be fine too. Um, it's always best to kind of um, chat to one of our uh, career training specialists um, and also to the training provider that you want to apply to as well. Um, they'll be able to give you more kind of specific um, information on that, especially with training providers and specifically what they want to accept, um, what will they will accept as well. Um, so we've had a question directly to Justine, so I'm going to pose that one to you now. And uh, this is a question for Justine. Uh, what did you find the most surprising about becoming a teacher? Um, I think actually it's the hierarchy in schools. It's far more hierarchical. Uh, within a school environment than um, in business. I was used to business where you get on, you do a deal, but there are lots of different levels and career progressions and various routes to go. I'm still learning it all. Um, so I, I think it's that, that's, that's, it's that hierarchy. I did not expect that at all. I thought there'd be the head and then there's sort of various levels, but there are lots of different levels. Lots of different levels and lots of different kind of routes you can take after. But that's opportunity as yeah. well. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And Joseph, I don't know if you've got anything that you've heard from other now teachers that kind of like been a bit different because I think when people career change, it's a long time since you've been in a school in the classroom, and uh, there's like kind of lots of things that are a bit different. A bit different. So I don't know if you've got any kind of yeah that said. Absolutely, and I think it's actually. I think that probably what Justine's said there really does resonate with a lot of the cohort experience. It's actually less about the teaching itself and it's much more about the way that schools operate and the way that schools are run um, and that kind of big transition. Because I think that, I think it's a point that Justine touched on earlier that often if you are a career changer, you're coming from a significant experience and you've got um, a confidence that comes with that in terms of some of the things that might otherwise be challenging about learning to teach just you know that standing up in front of a classroom and and that kind of thing but it's the that strange transition into school as a workplace which is often the um the difficult one and I think that again something that as a programs team we really try our best to prepare you for you know we try to make sure you've got plenty of opportunity before you start to connect with and hear from people who have already done it who are career changers um, and who can best advise you on how to spend those kind of few months in between your application and actually setting foot in that school in September. Lovely, thank you. Um, we've had a couple of questions also um, about salary and pay and um, what's and kind of what's that that is based on. So um, we've had uh, one question about whether you can start on different salaries depending on life experience and also um, whether salary progresses as you go through your career. Um, so um, from kind of like my knowledge so everybody kind of starts at that base level that I talked about earlier and um, there's kind of there, there isn't really much variation in that um, when you go into teaching it's, it's very much a kind of you start you start where you start um, and then you do progress though and with experience and performance there is a salary increases and it's called the teach pay scale you can uh, look that up online and it's quite kind of clear as well um, and it kind of um, is quite consistent and um, throughout the country as well so um, you should be able to kind of get a good steer on kind of where you, you'd be at, depending on um, how many other responsibilities you take on um, and also kind of like um, length of length of service, etc. Um, so I also wanted to just um, talk a little bit about now teach as well um, with a question about uh, now teach specifically and uh, Joseph, I think um, be good if you could answer this one about what the now teach uh, time commitment is. Yeah, um, absolutely. So in terms of the time, sorry, just to clarify the time commitment to now teach or the time commitment to, to teach now teach training, specifically, to now yeah. teach specifically, yeah. uh, it's, it's whatever you make of it. Um, so you're, if you join the now teach network, it's not intended to be a whole load of additional work that goes on top of your teach training year, which is already busy. And I think that, um, anyone who's been through it will tell you that it is a really busy year. Um, we're really here to support you as and when you need it. Um, so what that looks like, um, we run a whole load of events throughout the year. Um, Justine kind of touched on a lot of what that is already, so I won't go over that all again, um, but it really varies from content based webinars, which tends to happen in the evening and are always recorded, uh, to in-person social events, which are uh, opportunities to just connect with other now teachers. Um, as I say, everything we do, we try and make it as accessible as possible. And really there's no kind of, you're never going to drop out of the now teach network because you don't come to anything. If you find that you're getting on really well and you don't need the support, then that's fine. And that's totally okay with us a lot of people do find that actually in the training year they've just been really busy and they've not really needed to get in touch with us because they've got on with it okay and actually then they've come to us a couple of years down the line and gone well actually now I'm really involved you know, really interested in being involved as in part of this network of um career changes and sharing my experience and you know and kind of um supporting with that aspect so yeah, the the short answer to the question is that the now teach time commitment can be as big or as small as you would like it to be. Um, but the way that I view my role in the programs team, um, you know, it's the training period is tough and it's busy, but we've got your backs and we're here to support you kind of as as you need to be supported. And that looks different for everyone. 
That's great, thank you. And Justine, we've got a question here that I think would be really good for you to answer. Um, so someone's asked, said, um, I'd be interested in how career changes find it from an energy perspective. Um, I can see that teaching is full on, and whilst I already, oh, the question has disappeared. Just my eyes. Yes, so I can okay. see it. <laughs> I can see that teaching is quite full on, and whilst I already work a busy job, I don't think it is quite the same. Thinking about being in school early for a daily briefing and about fitting in my prep time. Thoughts? Okay, I think you pick up, so sorry, I think you pick up a lot of the points, a lot of the concerns. So um, in terms of energy, I actually, I am in my 50s, by the way, so person thinking of changing in their 50s, it's fine. I actually feel far more um, energetic. I've got far more energy than I had sitting in a desk-based job. You're on your feet a lot. The one thing I would just say is you need comfortable shoes and <laughs> funny shoes, definitely a must. Um, yes, you have to be in early. Your day is structured early. So I, I have to be in by 8.15. That's the requirement. I actually tend to get in early. I leave home at 7. Um, but my, you're full on during the day. You really, you're not doing your personal stuff in the day. That is fair to say. You're doing lessons or you're prepping or you're dealing with children. Um, but you finish. My school day ends at 10 past 3. Um, I have after school club, I finish at 10 past four, a bit of prep, I can do some from home as well. Um, so it, it, they're longish days, but I get home, I cook dinner in the evening, um, the prep, some prep I do for lessons I just do online in my, on my computer. Some schools have shared resources, mine just doesn't happen, happens not to for maths. Um, so you've got those resources already prepared. Um, so I, my day is shorter than it used to be, but they're long and they're consistent hours. And I think what you do is you just keep your energy going, you get to a holiday and then you slightly collapse, if that makes sense. And you just recuperate. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm waiting for Friday. <laughs> yeah yeah and like you said before though it's like it's because you kind of like it's one of those jobs where you're just doing all the time and it's quite um it's energizing I think is the word you use I think it's a, a really good way of describing it um so I've got a couple of questions that um I can answer and then I think we will look to kind of start wrapping things up so um someone's asked about uh apologies if I missed the answer to the question about 58 being too old to apply your website so is it also applicant is it stem was this an outlier we have had we have applicants of all ages honestly um the criteria really is that you're a career changer with significant career experience um and I'd say no like there are there are always people who have had kind of really full careers beforehand um people have worked kind of 20 30 years in other sectors and still do the career change um Lucy who's one of our co-founders um I think I can't remember but it was you know it's decades that she uh worked in another sector in journalism so um I'd say try not to uh, worry about worry about that. Um, there is support available, and there will be lots of people on the network, and um, also on the current cohort and past cohorts as well um, that are in the network who I'm sure would be willing to talk to you and talk and talk about that. Yeah. Can I can um, I just jump in on yeah, the you can, earlier and just say um, that like I was looking into this recently, and 45% of our network are over 50, and a further 10% are over 60. So oh, it's got the stats. Thank yeah, you. I do it. have the stats. So it's. it's I did not. <laughs> so <go>. thank you. <laughs> Oh, and also we just had a really good one for Justine, which I think I'm going I'm going to just ask really quickly and then I'll answer the final question that I've seen that I can answer and and uh, then we'll do the wrap up. So another one for Justine, knowing uh, what you know now about the experience, is there anything you would do differently? <laughs> Have you lost it? Sorry, I was muted. Oh, it. <laughs> I, was I was muted. Um, yes, I would have career changed earlier. I would definitely have gone earlier. And can I just pick up this school, do schools that they break? My school definitely does. There really is. People are crying out for schools are crying out for good teachers and people are willing to commit. Um, so I should have done this five years ago. Oh, that's really, that's really nice to hear in a way. <laughs> Um, okay, and then the very last question that we've got, which I can answer, and um, do I have to enrol to now teach and how does that work? So um, 
the short answer is yeah, yes, you do. So there's an expression of interest form on our website. So you just go on and it says something like register now. You just click that button and fill out the form and you'll get a call back uh, and you kind of go from there. Um, and that's where you start accessing support straight away. Um, so you'll speak to one of our advisors um, and you'll be able to talk through your options. And it doesn't matter kind of where you are in your thinking, even if you're still at the point where you think, oh, I really want to do this, but I've absolutely no idea how it works. Um, that's fine. Um, just have that initial conversation. That's the, uh, the best thing to do. Um, but um, even if you're further on and you know exactly who you want to train with and what you want to do, um, you still go through the same process and that's fine. Everything will just be a bit quicker for you um, on our side. Um, so that's it. Um, so um, just to finally to wrap up, um, I want to say a, like a big thank you to Joseph and Justine and also an apology about the tech issues that we've had. Um, like I said before, we will um, we will be sending round those videos um, that you missed um, so that you can access them in your own time. Um, and, and so that's it. So you'll now see a pop up on your screen. Um, so if you can just complete that, whilst I just reiterate, um, our specialist team really are here to help. Um, so just um, give that a uh, closing call um, a fill in when you get a second. Um, we will be following up with everyone with a phone call following this webinar as well. And so if you do have any further questions, uh, do get those ready um, and do, do draw upon the extensive knowledge of our specialists and also fill in our registration form on the website and we can go from there. So uh, lastly, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we hope you found it informative. Um, and I'm sure it was great to hear from Joseph and also Justine, whose first hand experience is really invaluable. So I'm going to say thank you very much and have a good rest of your evening. <laughs>